You might think this is a Bloody Mary. It's not. It's a red snapper, which is better than your standard Bloody Mary. Welcome to the Cocktail Spirit from Small Screen Network. I'm your host, Robert Hess. Now, the Bloody Mary, we're all familiar with that drink, and some of us might be familiar with the history of it or the history we've heard about it. It's really kind of murky exactly where that drink come from. There's a lot of different stories. One of them is that Fernand Patoit invented it in Paris sometimes pr sometime prior to 1930. He then came and was the bartender at the St. Regis Hotel in New York and brought the drink with him. Um, the hotel really didn't care for the name Bloody Mary, and so he rechristened it the Red Snapper, and that's what they called the drink there. Now, in Paris, he was making the drink with vodka because in, in Paris, vodka was more popular and more available than it was over here in America. Over here, we didn't get it until 1936-ish or whatever, and it wasn't even very popular then. It took a while for it to catch on. Uh, so when Fernand came over to America, Vodka was harder to find, uh, and so he started making the drink with gin instead of vodka. So we have the Red Snapper being made in New York at the St. Regis Hotel with gin instead of vodka. And that's where you get the Red Snapper cocktail. Interesting story I have about the Red Snapper is that a friend of mine just absolutely hated gin. And so I came over to their place for dinner one night, and I brought with me all the fixings for Bloody Marys. I brought vodka and I brought gin. I didn't tell her I was using gin, but I slipped gin into one of the drinks and let her do a blind taste test between a Virgin Bloody Mary, a Vodka Bloody Mary, and a Gin Bloody Mary. She was thinking she was trying two different vodkas. She absolutely loved the Gin Bloody Mary, and so what she really loved was a Red Snapper. Let's take a look at it. It starts out with two ounces of gin. I'm going to be using Martin Miller's gin. Um, it's got a nice, bright, herbal botanical flavor component to it that I think will work really well with the other ingredients in a traditional Bloody Mary style drink. To that, we're going to add a half ounce of lemon juice. Fresh squeezed, of course. We're going to add four to five ounces of tomato juice. Now, as much as I like fresh juices, I haven't really been able to make real tomato juice. It's kind of a more of a process because it's not just squeezing the tomatoes to get the juice out of it. So for this uh, use canned, I like using the small cans uh, because they're going to stay fresh longer and just use one can per drink of the small cans. Now comes the various spices we add. Now here's where you can play around all you want to in making this drink. Um, I'm going to add two dashes of Worcestershire sauce. Two dashes of Tabasco sauce. Um, there are a lot of other savory sauces like Worcestershire sauce, a lot of other sauces other than Tabasco sauce. Um, some people like using horseradish. I like mine a little spicy. Um, basically, you can play around all you want as long as you kind of try to make this drink savory. We then add some ground pepper and a couple of dashes of salt. And now we're going to take and mix this drink up. Now, the Bloody Mary is one of those drinks that some people say the proper way is not shaky or stirring, but something called rolling. Let's take a look at that process. Basically, we take two tins or you can take two glasses. I've put my ingredients here and I've got this one already with ice. You can see the, the frosting on the outside. And I'm just rolling it back and forth. Now I'm going to strain this into an ice-filled tall glass. And now garnishing is another place where you can take and play around quite a bit. Um, well, I'm going to take and garnish this with a stock of celery and uh, a couple of olives. But you can play around with both the spices and the ingredients to make this drink your own. And while many cocktails I don't feel people should play around too much on, the Bloody Mary or the Red Snapper is something I think you can take and really go to town on and personalize this drink. Let's take a look. Sometimes all the garnish is getting in the way of, of drinking it. That's why I 
with the celery on the side, it works pretty well. I don't know about the rest of you, but a Bloody Mary just tastes so much better with gin. And so you can either take it when you go to your favorite bar, ask for a gin Bloody Mary, or try asking for a Red Snapper and see what they know what you're talking about. There we have the Red Snapper cocktail.